Welcome to In the Life. I'm Leslie Gore. The Stonewall Rebellion of 1969 is commonly considered to have launched the gay rights movement, but our community did not spring fully formed from the brow of Stonewall. Many were already leading their lives honestly, often openly, and sometimes loudly. Even the modern gay rights movement had begun before that small group of Greenwich villagers got fed up one night in June and through the punch felt round the world. So tonight, in honor of those who preceded Stonewall, whose accomplishments or identities have been left out of mainstream history, and who are too frequently absent from even the LGBT community's own consciousness, In the Life challenges the Western world's historical blindness. A silent star of the jazz world, Billy Strayhorn began his prolific career in the early 1930s, Nearly 75 years later, he is recognized as one of America's greatest composers. While you may not know his name, chances are you know his music. The vast majority of our forebears weren't living as lush a life as Billy did, and they often didn't enjoy the same freedoms. In 2001, In the Life paid tribute to a group of everyday heroes whose lives have spanned both the pre- and post-Stonewall eras, and who continue today to do it their way. The famous left bank of early 20th century Paris boasted modern masters of all the arts. Among them, Ernest Hemingway, Pablo Picasso, and Romaine Brooks. An American expatriate and one of the center points of left bank society, neither Brooks nor her extraordinary work received the same attention as her artistic contemporaries, perhaps because of her subject matter. By painting striking images of the women in her life, Brooks put a lasting face on a community that challenged both the accepted definitions of womanhood and the negative connotations surrounding homosexuality. While Romaine Brooks' outspokenness shaped both her life and her paintings, Billy Tipton found a different way to be true to himself and his gift. The late Bayard Rustin fought passionately to give a voice to the African-American civil rights movement. He wrote the first Civil Rights Act organized the March on Washington, and brought nonviolence to the movement, the same movement that forced him out because his gayness was a political liability. On tonight's Reel to Reel, In the Life looks at the documentary Brother Outsider, The Life of Bayard Rustin, with directors Bennett Singer and Nancy Cates and executive producer Sam Pollard. The first stirrings of America's gay rights movement had begun as early as the 1940s. And by the mid-60s, several years before Stonewall, a small group of gay and lesbian activists decided it was time to go public and began staging quiet but courageous demonstrations. The early picketers used well-mannered visibility to challenge anti-gay discrimination. But once the LGBT community began to cultivate a sense of our own rights, others took off the kid gloves. And finally, Harvey's take on the work left for today's LGBT community. I'm Leslie Gore. For all of us at In the Live here at Biscaya Lounge in New York, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next month. <laughs>